Hey, what's going on guys? I'm here today to give a review of a home automation product. Um, this is from a company called Luxon. Uh, they reached out to me after seeing some of my videos on YouTube for my DIY projects and asked if they could send me this impressive looking briefcase with some of their products in it, including their uh, wired uh, main unit and two extension modules. Uh, one for um, one wire and the other one is for DMX technology which I'm not actually familiar with at all. Um, so I'm going to give a review of this, uh, an overview of the hardware and as well uh, I think more importantly I'll do an overview or a brief summary of the software that comes packaged with it because I think that's probably the more important thing to look at. Um, a uh, little disclaimer, Luxon didn't give me any money or anything like that. They just asked if they could send this to me uh, for a period of time. I've had it for about two months now. And, uh, you know, just give an honest review and ship it back, which I'm more than happy to do. Um, I think this is a pretty capable unit. Uh, I like what I'm seeing. Uh, it's kind of, um, it's in the, the middle tier uh, price-wise, uh, but it kind of reminds me of higher-end home automation products that you'd see. Um, namely any houses I've been to, uh, any wealthier people who have had home automation, usually it's a, a hardwired unit in their utility room. That's kind of the idea behind this, but it's at a, a more affordable price range. It's around $500 for the main unit. And I think for the software that comes with it um, and the extensibility, it's, it's a pretty reasonable price. Um, so I'll dive into that in a second, um, but first I'll give an overview of the hardware. Okay, so here's a closer up uh, view of the unit. So like I said, you've got the, uh, the main unit here, and then you've got two add-on modules for two different protocols. Uh, they sell a wide array of different add-on modules that you can connect up to this. Um, <clears throat> Take the main unit off here. Um, so this is, um, this, you know, this is a microprocessor uh, driven board. It's got an ARM processor, an SD card for uh, configuration, and um, a series of inputs and outputs. Like down here, these are some relays that can handle, I think it was uh, 10 amps. Uh, I might be uh, off on that. Um, but these are the ones you'd use to, say, control uh, light switches wired up. Um, a lot of people in the do-it-yourself market are probably familiar with uh, wireless based light switches, X10, Z-Wave, things like that. Um, higher end home automation uh, units are wired. Um, so this, this particular unit, um, although I personally don't see an issue retrofitting a home with it, uh, probably more geared towards new installs. Um, so what would happen is your light switch, like this European style one here, uh, would be in your wall obviously, a wire would go down to uh, this main unit to drive input, and uh, these uh, 10 amp out wires would actually go to the light sockets themselves. Um, Luxon did tell me that they're uh, making another unit like this that's meant uh, more for retrofitting, um, so it's uh, all based on a wireless system. Um, but as far as I know, as far as I've been able to tell, there's no reason you can't use this head unit and also integrate uh, wireless products into it. Um, so a, a few interesting things about it, uh, maybe obvious to some people, is unlike a uh, light switch just driving a light, even a home automation uh, one, uh, like Z-Wave or X10, um, they just drive the light. Whereas this one uh, goes to the main unit, and from there it can be programmed to do all sorts of things. So instead of uh, the light switch directly driving a light, um, you might have it toggle through scenes, like in this demo case, where it goes through different light strips, it turns on this light, indicating maybe it's a reading light, uh, or, or fully off, things like that. So you can have different scenes wired right into the switch itself. Um, there's some other things that I'm going to show off here. Uh, concept of blind control, temperature control, all that sort of stuff. One thing that I find that's really uh, interesting about this unit is um, it's kind of universal, highly configurable. Uh, for example, you might want to use this um, as your main unit for a thermostat, or sorry, rather for, um, 
Yeah, I guess it's the right term for thermostat to control your AC and your furnace and all that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> you can ditch your thermostat and you can use the relays on this unit to actually drive your furnace directly, which is very similar to a setup I have in, uh, uh, with a much older and not as capable product uh, in some reviews I've shown. Now, the temperature sensor, and this is what I find interesting, and this is something that I've actually wanted to do, is they're just using uh, these little uh, temperature sensors that actually look a lot like transistors. I've used them in other projects. I've used them in my, um, my automated window blinds, where they detect temperature and operate uh, depending on how you have that configured. Um, the cool thing about this is you could actually put one of these little tiny, uh, I guess, thermometers inside of multiple light switches throughout your home. So not only are you getting a temperature reading where your thermostat is, which in my case isn't the ideal position uh, to, uh, to gauge temperature in my house. This you can have, say, maybe eight sensors scattered throughout your house, maybe one in each room, and you can take an aggregate of them and you can choose to, uh, you know, dictate your climate control that way. In fact, I'm sure some of you people know that you can get motorized ducts as well, or, or dampers, rather. Um, so you might use the different uh, thermometers in each room and motorized duct dampeners to open and close vents and heat or cool according to the conditions in that in that particular room. So I found that to be pretty cool. Uh, this right here is interesting to me. It looks like a flying saucer. This is a presence detector. It's different than a motion sensor in the sense that motion sensors really need to see a good amount of movement to activate. I have motion sensors in my house. I've demonstrated that in other videos that turn my lights on and off. There's a lot of lag and there's a lot of missed triggers. Um, this is something that you'd actually mount up on your ceiling and it's much better at detecting uh, minute uh, movement. So, you know, I have a motion sensor in my living room turning lights on and it sees me there. Uh, the problem with this is if I'm watching a movie or just laying on the couch, it doesn't really pick me up. So that's, you know, a bit of a shame. Uh, with a presence sensor on the ceiling, presumably it'd work a lot better. Here's one product they shipped me <clears throat> that I never really had a chance to hook up and I'm sad about that because you know I have my doorbell project and this unit supports uh, doorbell integration. This isn't just an IP camera, it's an IP camera with uh, SIP communication protocol and SIP is uh, used for voice over IP and stuff like that. This is a microphone and a speaker and it's actually capable of two-way conversations so I could take my doorbell project to the next level with a camera like this where if someone rings my door it opens up a session to my phone, and I can actually see the person live, and I can, uh, you know, talk to them. And it looks like cameras with SIP functionality built in aren't really any more expensive than a regular IP camera. So going forward, I'm going to be looking for uh, SIP uh, built into the IP cameras that I buy. Um, this is an example of one-wire technology. This is something that would just go on your keychain and uh, when you get home, you know, you'd have this docking port uh, presumably mounted in your wall, and it's magnetic, you connect it, and it switches scenes uh, with your home automation setup. So, for example, I have my key keys here, and the handy thing is, or the convenient thing is, it, it actually gives you a place to put your keys, too. So when you come home, you can connect this, you could have it, uh, disarm your alarm, maybe change your thermostat settings, turn on your lights when you leave and you pull this off. Um, you could have it, oops, sorry, it's a little bright. Um, when you leave, you could have it uh, turn off your lights, close your window blinds, arm your alarm, turn off your fireplace, maybe even hook up an IR blaster, program it to turn off your TV and stuff like that. All right, so before I get into the software, uh, or maybe I already have, depending on how I edit this video, one thing I wanted to talk about was the extensibility of this platform. Um, I like that it was really customizable. I like that it's got a, a variety of inputs and outputs, and I can kind of choose what I want to use them for, um, which is the nice thing. And I do like that they have these add-on modules so you can extend to... Um, 
other technologies. Um, I'd hate to buy something and to be locked into um, their particular uh, protocol um, or things like that, where I'm forced to buy their, you know, their light switches and their this and their that. Um, like I said, with this wired unit, um, it supports up to eight light switches because it has eight relays. And then they have add-on products, uh, kind of like these modules where you can extend it up to a larger number. Um, one of my questions I asked them was, how can I tie it into my existing home automation system? Maybe I'm cheap and I use old technology like X10, like I do, or maybe I have some high-end, higher-end uh, Z-Wave uh, or other products like that. How would I communicate with it? And I um, actually spoke to someone at Luxon. We did a... Uh, remote desktop sharing for about three hours one night and he showed me all the software and it was really nice and I can't wait to get into that for you. Um, but basically it boiled down to um, you have a few options. Um, one, you can use uh, RS-232 I believe it is, which I think is just a serial interface. Um, so if you can connect to your other home automation products over serial, you wire it up directly and you just basically import some translation code to talk to it. Another way would be over network. So if you take my home automation blinds for a moment or my existing Wi-Fi thermostat, um, using their software is pretty clear to me that I can easily do UDP or TCP uh, communication um, to those products. So, you know, my window blinds have Wi-Fi modules. I configure it in here. I want to control the blinds. No problem, it sends the proper, uh, you know, I use a REST API, it sends the proper requests there. Another option that I, can, that I had considered is if I just do something like take a Raspberry Pi and I have a USB, uh, I guess, dongle or transmitter for X10, in my case, um, I plug this in here, doesn't take up much power, plug it in, keep it next to this unit, and I uh, also plug this into the network and I can communicate to the Pi over say TCP or I might even do a direct serial connection as well. So this is kind of like the brains for my X10 stuff. This is the brains for all my other home automation stuff and using their software they're able to talk together and I think that's a pretty reasonable solution. Also if you're someone like me who has a Linux server running 24-7 that's actually what controls this my X10 stuff today. Um, just do that. It's the same thing, right? A Pi is just a small computer running Linux. I'm already running Linux, uh, so that's not a big deal. Now, I wanted to get into the software a little bit. So here we have um, here we have the web interface, and here I have the smartphone interface, and um, it, it just seems to to work pretty good. Uh, one thing that I like, like for example in the app I just told the window blinds to open. In the background there you can see there's this green block that slowly fills up as the blinds move. And here you get a, a zoomed in view where it uh, will actually animate this on screen. And the cool thing is, you know, if I go in and interrupt it, so if you have multiple people using the same client, or sorry, multiple clients connected, um, it's updated in real time between them. So if I'm closing the blind, someone's trying to open them, it's not like I lose a sense of state or anything like that, uh, which is kind of nice. Everything gets translated uh, to the system. One thing that's interesting is on the app, um, you know, it's it, it has all the cool stuff built in, right? So here I am controlling an LED strip and I can actually control this quite granularly and for my liking that's a little too bright uh, so here we go maybe I want to turn it on, turn it off uh, very responsive in fact I'll be honest with you I hadn't even pushed this button until now I kinda <laughs> I'm kinda having fun playing with this so you know you can make it custom you can maybe even script something uh, where your media player uh, outputs its waveform to some sort of script you write, maybe in Python or something like that, and you could communicate this directly to the Luxon server because you can establish listeners, and you could really have uh, music going to the beat and truly have a party going on. That's pretty cool, actually. I'm I'm really impressed by that. Now I want to know 
if that updates over here. So where's my LED RGB? Okay. Live demo time. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, you cannot... Uh, I'm actually quite impressed with how that works. You can't see it on screen. Or Actually, yeah, you can see that switch. Just in the, the cube at the very bottom here. Um, but I've even seen the pointer. I've even seen the pointer in the this kind of rainbow gradient uh, color selector at the top. Uh, update. And, and it works both ways. Very neat. So I, I'm... I'm pretty happy with the type of software that's built into this. That's that's really cool. Um, so in here, I don't expect you to be able to read this. In fact, they um, they have a demo server on their website, so you can just go install the application. You can find it in Google Play and uh, the iOS store, and you can connect to their demo server and maybe m mess around. Um, Uh, so this is all the lighting control broken out by room. Uh, you have an entertainment section uh, where you can uh, play different music in different rooms. I d I'm not really into all that sort of stuff. I don't really understand what sort of APIs it uses and what sort of products you can use. Um, and different entrances, uh, you know, open close your gate, garage door. Um, very configurable. I've tried adding some stuff here myself and you can it's very free formed, right? Like you're not you're not stuck. It's like, do you have blinds? Do you have a doorbell? What do you got, right? Um, so one thing I want to try. I had this working. Awesome. Shh. You know, I wish uh, I'm gonna ignore that. My camera isn't very good. This is a little sketchy, but I'm gonna simulate a doorbell press. And it worked a second ago, and I failed. So what happened was I hit the ignore button for the doorbell, and it's got a timeout built in, which I'm not going to go edit right now, but basically if you hit ignore, that means that people are repeatedly banging your doorbell. It doesn't bother you, but it popped up the live feed on my phone. I need to demonstrate that again, because I really like that. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about about the blind control is I was asking them, um, you know, how, how, how does that work? Most blinds in the market just use a regular motor, um, probably a stepper motor, I'm guessing, and you just program in uh, what direction you want the motor to go for what duration of time, which is fine. I use a servo in my case, and I use a web interface. Um, but the person I spoke to on the phone demonstrated for me that it's no problem to do, uh, you know, a TCP, uh, do HTTP GET to my blinds to open or close them, change the state. And also, um, I can even configure my blinds to send out, say, UDP broadcasts of their state, say, every minute or something like that. And the server will have a listener configured um, to pick that up. So it's always pulling the state of, uh, of different items in the house. So let's see if this timeout has passed. Very cool. So the application, <laughs> my camera's pointing at a garbage can. Awesome. Um, so the camera's pointing at... Uh, Sorry, the application is listening uh, for doorbell requests. Um, my phone actually makes a doorbell noise. I get a live video feed. Um, I can have a voice communication if I had a SIP camera hooked up. And the cool thing is it's got nice little built-in stuff. Like I can uh, toggle the porch light on or off um, when someone rings the doorbell. Or you could even script that, I guess. I, I have mine scripted like that. Uh, and you can do actions like open the door. Um, which triggered something on the demo unit. Um, that's me. That's a little above my pay grade. But, uh, you know, maybe my mom stopping by or my brother and they needed to borrow something. No problem. Ring my doorbell. See it to you. I'll let you in. Very cool. Very cool indeed. You can tell by looking at the web interface, it emulates uh, the phone application quite well, or vice versa. Um, that's nice to have a sense of consistency. Um, now, there's I have a few issues with this. Uh, the web interface works good on a desktop PC. Um, overall, I give it a fail, and uh, I let the Luxon support team know about this. Um, there's really a few reasons. Number one, it doesn't scale well on mobile, which is something they could easily uh, fix. 
um, with a bit of CSS and JavaScript. Everything looks really, really tiny on a mobile phone, um, and that can become a bit of a problem. And you might say, why? Well, if you don't own an Android phone or an iPhone, which I understand is the minority, if you have Windows Phone, if you have a Blackberry, if you have some other product, um, you have to use the web interface. There's no application. Now, BlackBerry can run Android applications, so I'm actually in luck. This is a BlackBerry device. I'm running the Android app. It works no problem. If you have Windows Phone, uh, you're, you're definitely out of luck. Uh, another issue I have with it that I haven't reported is on my tablet here, I actually can't even log in. There must be some weird JavaScript going on where I can't type anything into these text boxes and it just doesn't work. Um, and like I said, it's really small. That's the default view. It just doesn't scale for mobile, which can be fixed in development. Um, the issue I have with this is the web browser I have on this tablet actually has one of the highest HTML5 compatibility scores according to HTML5test.com. So whatever they're doing is I'm assuming it's non-standard because it isn't universally compliant. I was hoping to log in with my tablet and use this interface on a touch screen. I thought that would actually be pretty cool. And unfortunately I can't do it. Um, that's okay. I mean, it's, well, sorry, it's not okay. I, I hope stuff like this would work. I'll be happy to give them feedback on that. Overall, I found the software very easy to use, very easy to configure. Um, I didn't have much issues auto-discovering um, auto discovering things. Um, let's see what this button does. I've never pushed it before. Uh, okay, so maybe another minor flaw um, is that the Luxon Weather Service, which I don't know what that is, I could only presume, is only available in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. Um, this is a European uh, company. Um, the reason why they sent me this demo unit is because they're branching out into the U.S., so I'm hoping there there will be more uh, weather updates to come, or <laughs> software updates to come. Um, once again, I just really like the software. I'd use it. I definitely use it, and it builds, beats having to build all this stuff from scratch. Uh, I, th I feel like even just the LED uh, switcher kind of kind of won me there, you know? Um, very cool. In fact, I want to turn that back on. <clears throat> One feature it has is save scene, which is pretty cool um, because you can customize stuff on the fly from the application. So maybe my watching TV scene, I don't like the light dimness or something like that. I can go through, edit the config on the fly in that menu. Uh, in this case, I was in the lighting menu. And when I'm done editing it, I can save scene. I don't have to go to my PC and edit stuff over and over again. It's not fun. One thing that's quite interesting about the software, and I really do think that's the selling point behind the service, is the record a task feature. Um, one thing you saw was the config tool, uh, which looks very complicated as it should be because it does a lot of stuff. Um, you probably spend a lot of time in here getting stuff set up, and then hopefully you don't come back here very often, or else that means that you didn't do something right or they didn't do something right. Um, <clears throat> but you don't have to go in there to do interesting things. Inside of here, I can schedule a task. I can record a new task, and let's say that's me going into lighting and changing the uh, uh, LED strip to blue, and it didn't change in real time while I'm in record mode, and we'll flick it on and off and turn it there, and what else might I want to do? Maybe I'll uh, close my window blinds or something like that. And I stop hitting record. And as you can see here, that it recorded 10 different commands with a start time that I'm gonna set for uh, about a minute from now. So, um, 
Yeah, let's do that, and I'll save quickly before the minute rolls over. And I'm kind of curious to see what happens. And it turns out that I set it for an hour from now, not a minute from now. So that would explain a lot. Um, but anyway, uh, point being, that's still pretty interesting um, that without going into the software, I can, or sorry, going into the config software, I can schedule different stuff to happen. Kind of cool. One thing I wanted to check out on here was setting up a thermostat, and I didn't have enough time to do that. I know that it completely supports it. I just wanted to see what the web interface looked like. Um, I think you can find more information about that on their website. Um, I'm going to turn off that light for a sec. I just wanted to demonstrate how responsive the dimmer is. So this light right here, this is just an LED, but it's meant, you know, this is their demo case, their sales case. Um, so I just wanted to point out, as I slide this slider, it updates really quickly. Um, that's good. I'm curious if that's something you can actually get with a wireless experience. Like I know what I mean is I'm wireless from here to my router to the device. That's pretty quick. I know with X10, um, I'll be in wireless to the lights themselves. There's a bit of lag there. This unit's designed to be a wired system. I, um, I'd, I'd really like to know how well this performs over, say, uh, Z-Wave versus a wired solution. That isn't a comment about Luxon. It wouldn't have anything to do with them. This is more a question about protocols. Here's a little tick down to the alarm arming. This is saying the alarm is armed. And I'm curious if the presence sensor is hooked up. So it looks like the alarm just tripped. I'm, I haven't actually tested this before doing this on camera. So I'm assuming this is the alarm going off inside of the house. I'll point out that at no point am I getting a uh, notification to my device or to the web browser other than, other than in the app and on the web browser, the alarm is going off. What I mean is there's no pop-up saying, hey, your house is being broken into. I have to assume that it just wasn't programmed that way for this demo case. It's, I mean, come on. It, if I get a live video stream popping up when someone rings my doorbell, I'm, I can guarantee, I, I don't even question that the application supports uh, some sort of alert when your alarm's going off. Okay, and then I just got home again. Okay, um, so what, I'm gonna ignore uh, this phantom doorbell, uh, cause that was me. And let's open up my blinds. There's a light on there to kind of just emulate what's happening. Um, and what other sort of things can I do? Um, one thing that really impressed me, I'm just gonna play around while I talk. One of the things that really impressed me while talking to these guys is, and something that's, okay, so something that's really important to me is A, is the hardware good, B, I think more importantly, is the software good? And I think I give this uh, a win. I think this is definitely a win. Um, but also, what's the support like? And what's what's their current community like? And the cool thing is, there's a few cool things about their support model. First off, their support is free. Um, I was given the impression that it's absolutely free. I don't even know if they have a situation in which they charge for support. And that's over the phone support too. They'll walk you through configuration um, and provide you with any help that you need. They seem like really friendly people, which is always nice. They're happy to have your business. 
And um, I asked them about custom work. You know, take my window blinds, for example. Okay, they've only ever integrated with, um, with window blinds that are direct drive motors. Okay, well, mine isn't direct drive motor. However, mine's also not a real product. What if it was? Um, you know, they distinctly gave me the impression that if you came to them with a support request to integrate with a technology that they currently don't work with, if it makes sense to them, they'll spend dev cycles to integrate that support into their product. Maybe uh, take Nest, for example. That's maybe too popular of an example. They're opening up their API. I can't imagine them not having integration with a Nest system going forward. Maybe have something a little bit more niche. It sounded to me like they will work to get um, to get it integrated. Man, that's really cool. I'm I'm really happy with um, the way the two-way communication works, the way the clients update uh, well, and just how well the application works. Especially running this in uh, Java emulation on a non-Android device. The fact that it that it actually works is pretty cool. So, in conclusion, on this unit, um, I'm I'm a little uh, I'm a bit of a cheap guy. I, I still give this a win. I was really impressed by the software and the number of things it supports. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it supports. It is a thermostat. It can interact with other Wi-Fi thermostats. It can control window blinds. It can control curtains. Control lights. Sauna, hot tub, you name it. It's kind of a universal thing. Um, it uh, has, you know, live camera view, two-way voice communication. Um, it certainly handles uh, the way that... Uh, it certainly handles managing its sockets, I guess, its persistent connection uh, to the application and, and the website. Um, this uh, present sensor isn't their own product. Uh, they just sent me something else they use. Um, apparently it integrates with a lot of different present sensors, motion sensors, stuff like that. Integrates with different webcams. Um, the out of box experience seems pretty good. I think it has a very steep learning curve uh, based on the config software, but I think this is the thing where you're gonna definitely reach out to that free support, or you might even um, hire an authorized dealer to do the initial config for you, um, but then you'd be able to handle it on your own. A uh, few cons would be it's not truly cross-platform, um, and I guess the double con to that is the, the web UI isn't very mobile-friendly. So at least if they didn't have cross-platform apps, um, I think the web UI should be a little bit more tolerant to different browsers. Um, I didn't find it too buggy, not too many problems, a few glitches with the web UI. Um, and other than that, I definitely give it a pass. Uh, sorry, not to say I'd pass on it, I give it a passing grade. And like I said, uh, you should be able to integrate with existing home automation technology. I think a real easy solution is a Raspberry Pi and USB dongles to uh, Z-Wave X10. I forget all the other protocols that are out there right now because I used to care about that stuff and now I don't. But there's really no reason why these can't talk to each other. Um, and I know from the software I saw there's no reason why you can't program them to talk to each other. The functional blocks make a lot of sense. The programming uh, blocks, I think that's what it was called, um, definitely interested me because I don't want a UI with no advanced backend. I want a nice combination of both, and it seems to have it. So thank you, uh, and good night. Okay, so maybe hard for you to see, but here's a look at the software uh, that I have running on their la uh, my laptop. And when we went through our uh, desktop sharing session, it became pretty obvious to me there's some really advanced software. It's uh, and that's. You know, when you, when you look at a unit like this, any um, hardcore nerd's going to be like, okay, it's an ARM processor, it's got a bunch of relays, some GPIO pins, stuff like that. Why don't I just take a Raspberry Pi and build on it? Um, fair enough. I mean, why not? That's kind of what I do. Um, I, I feel like it's much more advanced than that. I mean, for the $500 or so price 
point. I kind of feel like you're going to spend at least half that acquiring hardware to kind of get this sort of functionality. And then you don't have this extensive software behind it. Um, so real quickly, just looking at the inputs, um, here's some uh, different buttons and what they do. And I'm not really going to explain it, but this is kind of, uh, they call them functional blocks. This is, okay, Power One's input. And when you do that, run these series of programming events. Uh, like here's one to arm your alarm uh, for your house, which may include arming the alarm, uh, maybe reposition your IP cameras, maybe uh, close your blinds and, and all those sort of things. Um, so very, very cool. Um, like for example, here's some virtual inputs, which would be uh, buttons done in software on the application that I'll show you shortly. Um, and same kind of thing, you can go through and uh, you know, configure, okay, this is, if this, then that, right? They're just, l like, logical uh, blocks. Um, and um, I want to try and find an example, but I kind of forget to go, where to go in the software. Is it programs? Yeah, so here's some more what to do when someone rings the doorbell. Here's uh, the account accounting for all your different rooms. And it's kind of neat, you know, it's all drag and kind of a Visio flow to configure. I was also asking if there's uh, some advanced uh, programming you can do. And I totally forget where it is in the software. I know it's uh, called programming blocks or something like that. But there really is a programming language behind this too. So if you wanted to do some really advanced things, I think that wouldn't really be a problem. Uh, some other cool configurable stuff. It kind of has everything you expect built in. Um, but I feel like it's done quite well. Um, like the times section, okay? In, in daytime, what kind of stuff do you want to do? Uh, on the, do you want to do stuff on the minute? Do you want to do it at dusk, dawn? Um, you know, X minutes till sunrise or sunset in a particular month, what kind of things do you want to do? Every weekday, maybe every year? Uh, I mean, you can really program a lot of stuff here. Um, and then it's got, I think this is more like the scenes. Uh, they call it operating mode in the software. This is stuff like, okay, what is, al what is your alarm? What is everyone's absent? Uh, what is, you know, uh, what to do in said party mode? Like turning on LED light strips and maybe turning your... Uh, you know, your TV on, playing some music, all that sort of stuff. One thing it supports is profiles, uh, which is nice to see. Um, I live by on my own, so I had no need to really try this out. But you can definitely have different things for different people. Like, it's even got integration to different types of media centers and stuff like that. Maybe if I'm logged in, I like the lights a little dim, and I like this temperature in this room, and I want it to play my particular playlist, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, one thing that's nice is even though it's really advanced, it's got, um, it's got some nice GUI elements to it, like say I'm, I'm doing some work here and I need some mathematics, uh, you know, it's like, hey, here's uh, maybe a default for modulo, moving average, things like that, um, different comparators. Um, some things like for monitoring, it looks like it has some pinging capability to maybe alert when certain uh, devices are offline. Maybe I want to ping my IP cameras, and if any of them are down, that's certainly a cause uh, for alarm. And, you know, it's got some built-ins for different controllers, like some here, here's some thermostat stuff. Heating curve is the heating slope dependent upon outdoor temperature, uh, also known as, I guess, weather compensation. Um, You know, IR controllers, um, different types of room controllers, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so, you know, I spent some time looking around, and I don't know what's wrong with me, because I don't think it was that hard last time, but it's, I'm, it's probably even on the screen and I can't see it. I'm just trying to find where I can actually uh, do the programming for this, and I apologize for that. You'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, it does have its own scripting language. Um, and all the config on the back end is done in XML, so you could do some, some custom editing there as well. Um, and, you know, I think that's it's pretty cool. I uh, can't complain about that.